Africa is known world over for its ever beautiful scenery and is naturally a hub for incredible wildlife. But little is said of its few freshwater lakes. The Lake of Stars, formerly Lake Nyasa, is Africa's third largest lake. The lake is also known as a calendar lake because it is 365 miles long, 52 miles wide, and has 12 main rivers. As well as being the ninth largest lake in the world, sitting at 700 meters deep, it is also the third deepest. The total volume of Lake Malawi is about 8,000 cubic meters, but the amount of water leaving the lake through the Shire River and evaporation is less than 1%. Lake Malawi occupies a large part of the southern section of the Rift Valley in eastern Africa, which stretches from Lake Victoria in Kenya. The lake is an ecologically important body of water, not only to Malawi, but to the world, holding the largest number of endemic species of fish found anywhere on Earth. Lake Malawi has the right mixture of naturally environmentally friendly elements that sustain its habitants. It has been doing that for four to eight million years. The lake boasts as being the only home to the famous delicacy, the chambo, a tilapia species, and provides an economic ground for over 45,000 fishermen. Uniquely, Lake Malawi is also home to cichlids, a species of fish that has existed here long before our human species appeared in these places. This story explores spectacular islands, bays, and peninsulas of Lake Malawi, including the archipelago of Cape Maclear, the home of the cichlid fish. The cichlids' habitats include Likoma and Chizumulu Islands, and parts of northern Lake Malawi, the Maluri Islands, and the Mbuna Bay on the Mozambican side. The alteration of the gently sloping sandy or swampy rocky shores has been, and still is, an important factor in the speciation of the cichlids. The cichlids inhabit numerous islands and compose the largest assembly of fish species of any lake on Earth. There are about 875 known species in Lake Malawi's cichlids. However, experts believe there could be up to 1,000 species representing about a third of all known members of this astonishing fish family in the world. 
that's more types of freshwater fish species than Europe and North America combined. The rocky shorelines and the islands distributed throughout the lake were declared a national monument as National Park in 1980. And later, the National Park was elevated to a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1984. The Lake Malawi cichlids are also called maternal mouth brooders. The females brood her offspring inside her mouth until the fry are ready to swim and search for food for themselves. This ability gives them the edge over other lake species. These cichlids are some of the most aggressive and territorial fish species. For instance, a dominant male will maintain a spherical territory, allowing nothing but females to enter his territory for breeding purposes. The cichlids are able to adapt to a new environment quickly, and during the formation of the lake and over millennia as the lake has changed, the fish were able to adapt and survive. The shorelines within Lake Malawi National Park include spectacular forests that are home to an abundance of wildlife and game. The rocky shores, sands and peninsulas all form a vitally important habitat for the cichlids. The submerged rock caverns provide the perfect home for the cichlids. Some species, like African butterfly peacock, have their territories inside rocky caves in shallow waters. and the shafts of light shimmering through the water provides the perfect environment for rock algae to grow. A key source of food for most cichlid species. A good example of species variation is the Malawi bream, which has formed teeth from their pharyngeal bones in their jaw, enabling it to crush snails. The Malawi bream usually lives in large schools of fish with more than 100 female individuals with a lucky single male who shows off with bright breeding coloration. The lake has evolved through geological times, such as the rocky outcrops and their rocky shoreline have acted as isolated islands, where the cichlids evolved into totally new species without the taxonomic influence of the neighboring species. We can see examples of this still happening today. Throughout, the scraper mouth and buna, or the red top truava, is usually characterized by a blue body and an orange red dorsal fin. However, at Nakatenga Island, the same species has an entirely blue body and fin. In fact, Lake Malawi offers one of the world's best examples of the evolutionary process. Rising and falling water levels over millennia have created the perfect conditions for the endemic fish to adapt to their changing environment. Scientists have recorded evidence that the lake dropped to 400 meters below today's level about 25,000 years ago. These fluctuations have been erratic and at times extensively and at extended periods. The dramatic fluctuations of the lake's level will undoubtedly have been reflected in the speciation and extinction of the cichlids that inhabited the Paleo Lakes as they would have created new rocky habitats numerous times. As a result, the distance between the rocky shores is directly related to the variations between cichlid groups, giving rise to the hundreds of cichlid species endemic to this lake. Indeed, it is this adversity 
that led to such diversity. The lake's diversity is also due to the results of an adaptive radiation, a biological process that transpires in the cichlid speciation around the lake. The 875 or so species present today are probably just a small fraction of what lived in the lake at one time or another over hundreds and thousands of years. By introducing species, humans have also influenced the diversity. A number of species were introduced from Lakoma and Chizumulu Islands to Tumbi West Island in the 1970s, where it prefers shallower rocky habitat. Examples include the giant libido, the aurora cichlid, the afra, or blue zebra, which were introduced to the Cape from the Lakoma and Chizumulu Islands in the 1970s. Another unique species, the marmalade cat cichlid, is also restricted to Tumbi. The golden cichlid is another of Tumbi's favorite species. While coloration is usually confined to male cichlids, some species like the blue zebra cichlid or the afra have coloration in females. The story of the Lake Malawi cichlids may not give a full justice of its endemic biodiversity, but for the hundreds of species we don't even know yet, the Lake of Stars remains a mystery yet to be found, hence needing our protection. The cichlid's habitat crucially needs continuous guarding to guarantee the continuation of the fish ecology and evolution. However, the park's protection mission is not a simple and straightforward one. Besides the preservation of lakes' riches, there's also a need to alleviate poverty for the locals whose subsistence living on the lake is a complex balance. A report by the World Bank ranked Malawi as the third bottom of the poorest countries, which has left a greater population relying on the lake for subsistence living. One of the positive economic uses of the lake is tourism. Over the years, some ecotourism spots have been introduced to support the protection of the cichlid's habitat. The cichlid's habitat's sporadic and segmented distribution, especially as you go north, makes it even more important for ecotourism business to protect the habitats. However, poorly regulated and uncontrolled fishing behaviours have already put the park on a perilous path. This has had tremendous impact on the conservation effort of the national park. Here, the fishermen were caught in the restricted zone, but not in red buffer. So they got a warning and were ordered to move to another spot. In this is one scenario where the two fishermen were caught red-handed fishing in the restricted red zone. The older fisherman is also a local chief, which means he should be an exemplary and leader, not someone who breaks the laws. The park rangers takes a number of tests and interviews to examine the extent of the legal case.
The fisherman attempts to get excuses, but he's been caught in the act and nothing can save him from the prosecution. Although the process seems casual, the prospect of the legal trouble is very serious. Park rangers are highly trained personnel who have a tendency to handle work with humour. And once a case has been established, the park rangers confiscate the fish and netting materials as evidence in the court proceedings. The cichlid's habitat is critical as the threat of encroachment can occur any time when the officers are not seen. The local chief is alerted of the infraction caused and such procedures ensures mutual support of the park's protection. These measures attempt to protect the cichlid's habitats and the most vulnerable species. While it is important that the access to the lake provides mutual benefit, citizens must appreciate that protecting the national park is equally significant. The Malawi cichlids are some of the most ecologically complex biomes on Earth, requiring continuous global recognition. Despite having been classified as UNESCO World Heritage Site over 30 years ago, the lake and its biodiversity are facing a whole host of threats. The obvious direct threat comes from overfishing, but includes deforestation, oil and natural gas exploration, climate change and the aquarium trade. The protection of this heritage site is crucial and must be guaranteed for a long-term ecological preservation. The extreme degradation and encroachment on the key 12 rivers that feeds Lake Malawi, destroying the water system supporting those rivers. The results are intensified by climate change, seeing reduction of Lake Malawi by more than two meters by 2017. The indigenous forests of Malawi upland have been the key water catchment reserves for thousands of years. All of the 12 major rivers feeding Lake Malawi have water sources in the mountains where catchment has been critical. However, Malawi's indigenous form of glory is no longer the same. As the population doubles every decade, the pressure on land for living space, fuel wood and agriculture quadruples. Degradation of all forms including arson or illegal fires has critically increased. Charcoal burning has intensified and is probably the greatest forest threat to the riverine forests. The encroachment on forest reserves in all forms is appalling. The forests have been wiped out on numerous hills and mountains usually used to be known for preservation. The sources of the 12 major rivers has not been spared.
Most of the river's catchment areas used to be covered by the Miombo trees, which have stood the perils of time. And suddenly, the habitat has lost their sheen, and their original foliage of ecology depleted. Today, forests in the river's catchment areas have been converted into desert-like, ugly land that are not even arable for agriculture. The forests are cleared and abandoned, then erosion and all sorts of destruction takes place. Degraded and abandoned, the desolate, rocky outcrops remain just a reminder of the life before. In the end, the rivers which used to be perennial are no longer the same. Known streams dry up before waking up from the dream. The larger rivers have increased in flooding and aquatic erosion due to catchment area depletion. As a result, we have seen Lake Malawi continuously dropping in water levels. Sometimes one wonders if there'll be any stop to such lunacy. We humans are so obsessed with our needs that we have not given a deserving thought to how these forests form an ecological fabric that holds our lake together. The reduction of lake water level exposes the cichlids' rocky habitats. While climate change has a greater role, the protection of the 12 rivers that feeds the lake is of most critical need to guarantee the intake of water into Lake Malawi and the cichlids' habitats. The survival of the national park and that of the cichlid species is now at the hands of the Malawians and global citizens. we must uphold the World Heritage Site to make sure that this generation does not lead the species to extinction. Further north of Malawi, Lake Tanganyika holds an invaluable collection of endemic cichlid species. However, its endemicity does not match up to Malawi's endemism. Lake Tanganyika is about five times older than Lake Malawi and has experienced more geological processes and fluctuations over millennia. Yet it has only 220 cichlid species compared to Lake Malawi. Although the Nile perch have been villainized for their role in the decline of the native fish species in Lake Victoria, the greatest share of blame falls directly to the humans. Overfishing and indiscriminate taking of young fish has diminished the breeding populations. Still, the International Union for Conservation of Nature has listed more than 40 species of haplochromines from Lake Victoria as extinct. Although some scientists have cautioned that not enough is known about many of the species. In all, with the annihilation of Lake Victoria's fragile ecosystem, which used to hold probably thousands of cichlids and now holds around 500 species, the importance of Lake Malawi cannot be understated. And its future will depend on our own ability to adapt and to learn from such ecological disasters and mistakes.
It is in that spirit that the stories of the cichlids must continue to be told. We all need to increase the protection of the lake and its rivers to guarantee the benefit of the aquatic ecology, preserving the cichlids biome and habitat for future generations. Killing me. 